I remember when we worked together, yeah. you were always interested in crystallographic computer, yeah. and you you worked with Judy Matthewman at um, right. at Cambridge yeah. um, on developing software. That's Would you right. like to say a little bit about well, that? Well, it, it really goes back earlier than that because when I was a research student in Kathleen Lonsdale's lab, we had a computer called the Ferranti Pegasus Mark II. Now this was a machine which had two huge units as big as this room, uh, beautifully uh, beautiful coachwork, but beautiful bodywork built by Rolls Royce. Um, it had 8K of store and a magnetic drum. All software was programmed in machine code. Five hole paper tape in and five hole paper tape out. We were doing least squares refinement on that uh, by cycling tape in and out. So we had to learn really the fundamentals of computers and the computer architecture and how they worked. So there were no high level languages at that time uh, until one was developed in Gordon Square in London at the Atlas Centre called uh, Mercury Autocode was the first sort of, sort of like a basic uh, uh, programming language. So that was a very good introduction to computing at the bottom level. That computer, by the way, many years later um, was resuscitated uh, and rebuilt. And uh, I was invited along with a few other people to the Science Museum. Where they had it actually running for the first time in many years. <laughs> Uh, it was the only working valve computer in the world, and we had a big party with all of the original, a lot of the original uh, uh, people who had built that computer in, back in the in the early 50s. It had originally been used by British Aerospace for designing wings. It then went to Norway, and Norwegian then gave it to Kathleen Lonsdale, and we had that in London. We were the only research group, I think, in the world that had its own computer in those days. Talking about 1965, mm. something like that. Um, so that computer was, they, they got it running at the Science Museum, and I remember in front of the, the primary unit, there was a chair which we used to sit at with all the keys we used to, to, to press. You could still see a coffee stain that I'd left there one night. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, it's no longer at the Science Museum, but they, they've, they've put it into the store now, unfortunately. But it was a, a unique machine. You can read it up about it on the web. If you go, if you just type in Ferenti Pegasus. If I so... So that's how I, 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 I learned the, really the basic, learned the fundamental mentors. side yeah, of computers. Yeah. yeah, but then you 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 worked. Judy Massiman, mm. um, I remember at Cambridge had uh, designed a, a program for doing crystallographic computing, that's a right. kind of crystallographic toolkit, really. That has started with Jane Brown. Actually, right. she was the she was a group programmer herself, mm. and she had this link with Judy Massiman, who was an outside worker, mm. uh, designing uh, kind of modular packages of crystallography. And I took that over later, in fact, when I came to Oxford, because um, Jane had moved to ILL in, in France at that mm. time. Mm. And so I, I was able to employ Jude to carry on with that work. So my involvement with that stuff really was more uh, after being in Oxford. Right, okay, so you... you um, but I did write some computer programs in Cambridge. But, but that, that gave then. rise to your Crystallographica computer program. Later on, that was in Oxford Crisis, to be yes. our company, uh, wanted to have a software arm to that. And um, one of my students at Oxford, uh, who was really very clever, uh, we employed him at Oxford Cryosystems to deal with the, the software designed for our apparatus. And I had the idea we should try and do something more on the crystallographic software. So he and one or two others uh, started programming in, uh, in C++, Visual C++, um, uh, a program called Crystallographica, mm -hmm. which again was a kind of modular crystallographic software uh, where you could, it, it involved, it language, it language Pascal. And uh, one of my very bright students had built a whole compiler. Uh, I think it was the only Pascal interpreter in the world, which meant that you could type in a command and get an immediate response. So that was built into it. So you could actually design your own software mm. by bolting together all sorts of crystallographic modules. Mm. So if you wanted one to, to calculate the structure factor, you just wrote that into the, into mm -hmm. the code and did it for you. Mm. It was brilliant. Right. Uh, and uh, we put that on the market for a while. Um, eventually we discontinued it, mainly because it had been written in 16-bit computers right. as they went out. Right. And to change the compiler to work on a 32-bit, which was going to be such a huge job, we abandoned that. So we, we started giving the software away free. Right. 
But we also developed an, another version of this, of what we call crystallographic search match, which was designed to search pow uh, powder data. We collected uh, powder mm -hmm. patterns and then searched through databases to try to identify the materials. And we had a few, there were a lot of programs around that did this kind of thing, but I think we had a few uh, unique points about it. Uh, and I remember it was at the Glasgow International Crystallography Meeting, I don't remember the year now, uh, we, I, I, I got hold of a guy on the Philips stand. Philips at that time were the company that uh, sold powder diffractometers, one of the main suppliers of powder diffractometers. I got hold of the managing director then who was there, said, you've got to come and have a look at this. And I, told him, I showed him our search match software. Now Philips at that time, their software for their powder diffractometer was really quite poor. They had a beautiful machine, but they really were falling down on the software, whereas their competitors were better at software. So I showed him this, and he went away, and he came back and said, let's do a deal. So Oxford Cryosystems and Philips, which then became later Panalytical, we, we did a deal, worked for several years, and they paid us royalties while we kept the software updated. And eventually we sold it to them, so we no longer do it. So the Panalytical software is based on your... Yes, their the search Oxford match. Their search contained match the kernel based... of that is based on ours. That's fascinating, I yeah. never knew that. Yeah.